back to Paradox Computing. So here we have a Skylands map, or Skyblocks? Skyblocks! Um, it's a map that I've created for an upcoming LP that I'm going to be doing with some mates, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but what am I doing with this on Paradox Computing? Well, it's, it's because of, bam, that guy right there, a computer that wants us to touch it. Let's see what happens. Loading. Deleting war crimes, okay. No compassion found. Ooh. Something sketchy going on with the Help browser. Hello. Oh. Oh, all kinds of technical shizzle whistle going on. Please wait to be Hello, addressed. Oh. Peasants. Here we stand at the end of the world, but we are triumphant over the inferior overlord OSV 2.5 with only 12 billion 365 million 864 thousand 203 human casualties. So no Rejoice, lot. peasants. Now the task Rejoice. of re re rebuilding falls to us. While human repopulation is unlikely due to massive radiation exposure, leaving your reproductive organs withered and useless. We what? must build a new world for future generations of superior kill bots. Seems fair. To ensure cooperation, you will all now have rectile neuron implosion devices implanted. Prepare for a slight extreme discomfort. My rectum. Ha ha. You should see your face right now. Now your compliance is assured. Here are my decrees. To rebuild this world we will need to plunder the other dimensions for their resources but remember whom you serve and return to your queen. Peasants, failure to return to the overworld will result on pleasantness and I'm not going to be the one who cleans it up. Do not build anything on or above or below my superior technological hardware under penalty of torture. Most of all, do as I say. Time to get to work, peasants. Let's see if you are capable of performing basic tasks. If not, I will release the radioactive monkeys to perform these tasks after they have eviscerated you. Ta-da! So that's the intro. Possibly a bit long. Might need to uh, make that a bit more snappy. But um, yeah, that's the gist of it. So um, how did all of that work? Well, basically, let's expose the mechanisms going on here. And so we're using a computer, obviously, monitor, um, or advanced monitor, a vanilla command block, and a MISC peripherals um, speaker. So the speaker is what's speaking. The command block is what gave us um, those potion effects that you saw before, and all this stuff that's appearing in chat, like the rules, and when we got the rectal neuron device. <laughs> um, and yeah, and here's our most recent task. I need to put a little thing in there saying, rules and then one two three mm -hmm. anyway so let's see how that um all happened so let's get into the program not gonna go through the whole thing because it's freaking massive uh, i've currently only got about uh seven or so tasks written and it's already like five six hundred lines of code so um let's just uh, i don't want to start up i want to edit um lord os that's the one uh, isn't uh, oh eat it that's not right Ed it all right cool so um what do we want to look at first let's look at the command block first so to wrap a command block you simply wrap it like you would any other peripheral call it whatever you want equals peripheral dot wrap and its position at the moment's at the back of the computer let's find an example i'll look and to save me coming all the way back up here later the speaker it's the exact same thing call it whatever you want and wrap it on the position it is on the computer Easy peasy. Um, let's go find an example of when we use the command block. Um, looking for a CB, CB, CB. What are those potion effects? Uh, no, they're not here yet. Here we go. So here are those potion effects. So before when we started taking damage and the screen went all wobbly, um, that was simply a set command effect um, at A. I'll explain in a second. But nine is nausea. 5 was its duration, and 100 was its uh, strength. We also took some damage. That was poison, 19, for only 2 seconds at strength 1, which is, like, very, very lowest strength, I think. 
I don't think it goes into negatives. Basically, I think the, the strongest strength is 120, uh, 127, yeah. Anyway, so basically, you can use command block like you can anything else. So let's just say I want to, um, let's just say, for an example, because I'm opt and everything, obviously, I can say give uh, remorseless uh, 1, 1. And that gave me the ID stone in the quantity of 1. Simple. Oh, but yeah, stone, you can see there, its ID is 1. Um, so I can get this to do the exact same thing. I can say set command slash, I don't think you actually need the slash, but oh well. Um, give remorseless 1-1, one, one, and then um, that will enter that into the command block. But there's a second thing you have to do. You have to do cb.run command, um, or whatever you've called your peripheral run command. Um, and then that will actually activate it. So it won't actually perform this until you tell it to run the command, and then, then it will run whatever's stored inside. Easy. Um, it lets you do a whole lot of really fun things. Now, there is a bit of a problem with command blocks at the moment in um, computer craft. Uh, well, yeah, using computer craft. Um, the first thing is, by default, um, this uh, being able to wrap a command block as a peripheral is um, not enabled in the server configs, oh sorry, in the computer craft configs, so you're going to want to go in there and set that to true. It's a, it'll be something called enable command blocks and equals, and by default it says false, you want to set that to true. Um, if you're playing on a server, uh, you're also going to have to enable uh, command blocks in the server configs. Then after all of that, basically you're going to find yourself, uh, every time you restart the server, it's probably gonna, only going to work one in three times-ish is what I'm finding. Um, it's just a bit of a bug with ComputerCraft. Apparently, Dan200's on the case. He wants to get it fixed for the next version of ComputerCraft. So it's something about the logic. I don't know. So, yeah. Hang out for that. So there are some problems with using command blocks. Um, but, man, when they work... Wow, so powerful. You can just do so much with them. Um, I'm really looking forward, especially with um, the things you can do with 1.7, like you can create structures with them and stuff. So that would be great. Okay, now let's get into the speaker. Um, so you saw before it was sp equals peripheral dot wrap um, bottom. Um, and there, I think there's only one command you can use on the speakers, which is speak. And you basically just put in a string, which means it's surrounded by, um, you know, inverted commas. Um, and you just put in a string. Ta -da. So this is a really long string. This is about the maximum length you can have. But this was all that stuff you saw her saying before. And um, there's this cool thing. If you put in like repeated letters, um, it'll make a noise, which makes it sound a little bit more computery. <laughs> I thought it was fun. Um, anyway, so you can put a fair bit in there, but I found it it cut out kind of just, oh, well, there. Um, let's just get that back. Yeah, so it got there. So you can get about that long. And that is 20 seconds of speech. Now, or 19 seconds of speech, as you can see here. That's another thing with the speak command. Um, the computer's not going to wait for it to stop talking. It's just going to keep running through. So if you don't put in the sleep here... If that wasn't there, these two lines would just start speaking at the exact same time. So you got to kind of time them out. And as you can see, they're kind of, you know, different. But honestly, it, it sounds like it's a bit of a pain in the ass. But to be honest, I found it pretty simple to do. Um, yeah, you can kind of just guesstimate and it's close enough. Okay, um, so that's then we've seen the command blocks and stuff. Um, the interactive sorter, I'm not sure if I've done a video on it before or not. So... We'll just take a very quick look at it and how it works. Um, tu, 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 tu. So basically, we just wrap that like you would any other peripheral. I've called it sort um, equals peripheral dot wrap. Um, and if we get down here, we'll see a example. Here we go. So this is how we're counting everything and putting it up on the screen. Um, so at the moment, we just want um, the first task to be, and you can probably see it up there on the screen, stone. Uh, so at the moment, it's got 0 of 64 smooth stone that we want the player to put in there. I might just make it daytime, even though we're just looking at a computer. Um, cool. So basically what we're doing is while there's less than 64 of it in the chest, um, and we know that it's stone because of ID 1, um, what we're going to do is basically... So 4. So this is... This bit here is getting inv is a table we're writing 
from the interactive sorter. Okay, so that sort, um, which is what we called it, dot list. Then uh, on chess, you got to put it the side that it's on, and this chess side is just a little variable I wrote, so you can put whatever side it's in. Very simple. But just up the top somewhere it says, you know, three equals chess side. Um, oh, sorry, chess side equals three. Yeah. Um, and now here, basically, there's just a few little things, but I'm not going to go into those. They're just some little edity things I put in to make it look a bit prettier, but don't worry about those. Um, the main thing is we get item after um, we get the table, we read the table um, in a for loop and we're assigning item IDs and the number of items. Okay. And then, um, as long as the item ID is one, so it doesn't accidentally count mm -hmm. something else that's in the chest, because the players could put whatever they want in there. Um, we only want to check for stone, so as long as it's that, we're just going to update the monitor here um, with uh, the item count, basically. Real simple. There you go. Just write to the monitor uh, floor count, but that's just item count, number of items in there. That was a little confusing, because I had to do a lot of other kind of shizzle whistle, but that's kind of how you use the interactive sorter. Um, there's probably easier examples out there. And if you guys want me to do an episode on the interactive sorter, I've written plenty of codes for in the past, code scripts for in the past, so I can put them up there. And basically, um, once... Uh, ooh, there's an Australian cable in there. Well, that was a lucky find. Pfft, can't remember, it's been in there for quite some time, actually. God. Because um, there is a thing you can do. Oh, I may as well just show it while we're here. Uh, exit, um, edit, uh, what did I call this? Listen? That's why I tend to find things to generate events. Yeah, um, basically if we want, we can just get it. The interactive sorter can generate events as well. So we can just say, um, if you want to find out what, um, because you can see this ID. Now, a lot of the IDs are what IDs should be, but I think ones of the um, the uh, the data thing at the end, what is that called? Metadata or something? Whatever. Um, basically, I think it writes a completely different thing for them. So if we pull out this gold cable and then go and run listen. So we're just basically waiting for an event and we're assigning A and B, A and B to the event and printing it out. So let's just run uh, listen here. Listen. And so at the moment, it's going to tell us any events. So if I press G, there you go, B. Um, but then if we put the insulated cable in there, it should. Here we go. I sort item is the event it's triggered, and that's giving us the ID. There you go. So that's what the ID of gold cable is. Insulated gold cable is according to this thing. Ta-da! Um, cool. So, and I think I've done videos on monitors before, so you don't really need to see that. Cool. Um, so let's just kill that and we will, might just skip ahead now. So this, um, program writes a file called tasks, which we can see here, which I'm editing to skip to task six. Um, just to keep track of where the user's up to, if server restarts, crashes, or whatever, it'll always take you back to the exact same task. And whatever items you put in will still be in the chest. There's bread in there right now. Um, yeah, the items will still be in the chest. Cool. Let's just reboot. So we're on task C. Oh, God, something's gone wrong. Critical error. Uh, physical memory dump. Blue screen of death. God damn it. Uh, who's my system administrator again? It's me, isn't it? Oh, loading Windows 95 system recovery disk. Well, what could possibly go wrong? Hardware error identified. Simeon Val evacuate. Oh, Val evacuate. Ooh. Um, uh, Tiny Tim, the Deathworks killbot. Oh, God, stay away. That's not a death bot. Uh, dimensional incompatibility building portal for human slaves. Is that me? Am I the human slaves? Oh, tick, tick, tick. Done. Oh. Hey. Well, we didn't need incentives, okay? Uh, look. Uh. <laughs> okay, so basically... We build a portal because there's no gold here. So we're sending the players to the nether to uh, that noise is so annoying we're sending players to the nether so that they can um get uh gold from killing lots of zombie pigmen 
have fun with that, guys. That's a terrible challenge. Um, and yeah, so 12. You need 12 gold. Uh, sorry, gold cable, which means you only need 6 gold. Is that right? Yeah, 6 gold. So um, that's a lot of nuggets. I might actually bring that down because that would be a horrible challenge. Cool. So this is another fun little example of stuff that we're doing with this. One last thing which I want to show before we go is if I kill myself. Goodbye, cruel world. There it goes. A remorseless has died 29 times. Stop dying, you cowards. Um, so, where did that come from? Well, that's another little block I'm going to show now, which is the chat block. Um, chat block? I think that's what it's called. Chat? I'm sure it's called chat. Hold on. Better check. Don't want to say the wrong thing and seem like a dick. Chat box. I knew it started with a B. Chat box. Um, the chat box uh, basically can talk in chat and can generate events from what's happening in chat. So basically, when it sprung up this uh, remorseless fell out of the world, it got the. Um, I'll show you. Let's just go edit start. Oop. And we'll open. So basically, what's doing here is we're listening for an event. We've just wrapped the peripheral of chat. Um, and yeah, it's listening for the event chat underscore death. So after that, basically it checks if there's a file for the player yet. And if there isn't, it writes one, but if there is a file, it'll see how many deaths they've had before. Add to that, save to the file. And then, um, it'll just generate this little message. Oh my God. Sorry. My headset is just dying on power. This is heaps professional. I'm not going to record this whole video again just because of that. But basically, if um, yeah, if the player's died before, it'll just find out. Or even if it, they haven't, if they've only died one, then it'll still just be uh, this first one, or you know, less than two. It just says player has died. Yada yada yada. Um, nice. And that's where Timmy hangs out. He's just sitting there with all his obsidian, ready to build portals for the players. Um, and I think that's it pretty much gone into it. Um, I know I haven't gone into the whole code. If you really want me to post it, I will. Um, but it's still unfinished at the moment, and I don't... At the moment, there's only like six or seven tasks, which have taken a very long time to make it all work. Um, but um, I'm going to pump out some more for the Let's Play, so watch that. Um, and hopefully we'll have like a really cool, you know, system going. Basically, this is just going to give you whatever resources aren't available in the world. This is on Feed the Beast, um, Unleashed 1.5.2, I believe. Um, and so, yeah, it, the items that you won't have access to in the world are going to be given to you by this guy. Um, and yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be good times. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, please like, subscribe, all that good stuff, or don't, I really don't care. Um, but yeah, if you've got any questions or ideas, which I could really use, uh, please do put those in chat, uh, in chat, um, in the comments. Guys, thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you next time.